Hello! This is an example year three multiplication lesson. This lesson was designed by NCETM, that's the National Centre of Excellence in Teaching Mathematics. The lesson was designed for the Mastery Readiness Programme, which is a school development programme um, which runs nationally. I run a work group in the Dorset area. Um, schools can sign up to this program to work together to further develop their mathematics teaching into a mastery style. The programme um, for Mastery Readiness is year one of a three year programme which schools go on a development journey together. Um, the reason I'm filming this lesson is because um, when we did this lesson as a big school work group, some of the participants said it would be really useful to have this lesson on video to share at inset sessions or staff meetings to open up discussions about um, mastery teaching. This is not a perfect lesson by any means, but it has lots of mastery elements in it to open up discussions amongst staff groups. This lesson is not aimed for children to watch, but kids, if you're watching, feel free to join in and have a go. Um, it's aimed as a discussion point and a learning episode for teacher training. Um, I'm filming this in the summer holidays, so I don't have children to participate with me, so I've got some of my lovely colleagues to be in the role of the children. Um, so if you think I'm speaking a little bit patronisingly to some adults, we are pretending that they are children in the um, context of this lesson, um, and then sometimes I'll be speaking to them as if they are adults in a training session as well. I will pop some links in the description box below to further reading to do with Mastery Mathematics if you're intrigued, to information about the Mastery Readiness Programme if your school thinks you might be interested um, in some more content like this being delivered across a three year duration. Um, and I hope you enjoy this lesson and learn lots from it. Thanks. Okay, we did some multiplication last week, did some times tables, and we found that 12 times 12 and 15 times 7 was a little bit trickier than some of the others we looked at. So we're going to explore some multiplication today um, to improve our multiplication skills. Have a look at the board. What can you see? Yellow dots. Yeah, vertical, horizontal, yellow dots. Okay. An array. An array. We can see dots, we can see vertical lines, we can see horizontal lines. We call that an array. Thank you very much. What can you see now? I can see one lot of six dots. Okay, so one six is what we can see looped together. What can you see now? Two sixes. Two sixes. Two sixes. Three sixes. Three sixes. Three sixes. Four. Four. Four sixes. Thank you. We can see four sixes. If we were to write this representation as an equation, we would write four. The multiplication symbol is 6, 4 times 6 represents 4 sixes. What can you see here? 1 lot of 4. 1 4. 2 2 4. 2 4. 3 3 4. 3 4. 4 4. 4 4. 5 4. 6 6 6 4s. Four. So, we have 6 4s if we were to write it as an equation. Six times four represents six fours. What do you notice about these representations? What do you notice about the pictures on the board? These ones on the left are grouped horizontally and these are grouped vertically. Good mathematical language. We've got horizontal groupings here and vertical groupings here. We've got four groups on that side and six groups on that side, a different number in each. Mm -hmm. Four groups on this side. Six groups on this side, but inside each group there's a different number. Did you notice about the total in each image? The total is equal. Absolutely, yeah. the total is equal. Okay, so in this one we have four sixes. One six, two sixes, three sixes, four sixes. You say four sixes? Four, four six sixes. sixes. And this is the equation to represent what we've just said and to represent what's on the board. In this one we have six fours. One four, two fours, three fours. Four fours, five fours, six fours. And here's the equation to represent what we said out loud and what the image represents. What do you notice? What can you see? One six and three sixes. Absolutely. Some of the dots have flown into the sky and we've got one six up here and three sixes. So we would say that as one. 
one six and three sixes. Repeat. One six and three sixes. Okay. And what can you see here? What would you say to represent that image? Two sixes and two sixes. Two sixes and two sixes. We'll say that nice and loud and confidently. Two sixes and two sixes. We would say two sixes and two sixes. We would write it, it's flowing down the bottom of the board here, two times six and two times six. Two sixes and two sixes. Can you have a go at writing that the same way I have on my board? Using the multiplication symbol and the word and. Two sixes and two sixes. What can you see here? Two fours and four fours. Two fours and four fours. We've said it correctly. How about you write it down? Have a go and use the same format that we used in the previous slide. We said two fours and four fours. It can be written two multiplied by four two fours, and four multiplied by four, four fours. What can you see now? Three, three fours, fours and, and three, three fours. Three fours and three fours. Have a go at writing that as an equation and use the word and in between. Show each other, see if you agree. Have, has your friend used the same formats that we used before? Three fours and three fours. Three fours and three fours written as an equation. Hmm. What do you see now? One six, one six and three, three sixes. sixes. One six and three sixes. Have a go at writing that as an equation. Three sevens and three sevens. Three sevens and three sevens. Great work. Can you write that as an equation? Three sevens and three sevens. Three sevens and three sevens. Okay. You have a worksheet in front of you. I'm going to give you a fresh copy. And in the top left hand corner, you have an array that looks just like mine. You're going to partition your array using one line. I've chosen to do my line here, which would show two sixes and three sixes. You can do the same if you like, or you can explore putting your line in a different place. Have a go at exploring your array with one line and write the equation to represent your partitioning. sentence. So instead of saying the word and, we're going to say the word plus. So for this one, I've got one six plus three sixes. Repeat after me. One, one six, six plus three, three sixes. sixes. One six plus three sixes. And we can also add on now equals four sixes. One six plus the three sixes equals one, two, three, four sixes in total. If we were to write that as an equation, we could say one six and plus three sixes equals four sixes. Okay, can you copy that on your board to practice how we can change the and to a plus? You can see some fantastic equations on your whiteboards. Okay, what can you see here? You can use the word plus instead of the and. Three sixes plus one six. Have a 
I go at writing that as an equation. Three sixes plus one six. And I can see you're automatically adding the equals on the end. So what have you written after your equals symbol? Four, four sixes. Four sixes. Four with the multiplication symbol. Six. Three sixes and one six. Three times six, and you may have changed your and to a plus. Three sixes and one six. Three times six plus one times six is four times six, or four sixes. Okay, what can you see? I want you to talk to your partner about what you can see and agree on how you would write the equation for this, including plus and equals. So I would say two fours mm -hmm. plus four fours equals six six fours. And how might you write that as an equation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. children, I might ask some to come up and write on the board what they've written so that we can see if there's any misconceptions, if there's any variation in the calculations that they're writing. We've got two fours and four fours. Two times four, you may have written the word and, or you may have swapped that and for a plus symbol, an addition symbol. Four fours is six fours, and I can see that matches what's on your whiteboards. Okay, can you write this as an equation? Have a go by yourself. would be 1 times 6 plus 3 times 6 equals 4 times 6. What we can do now to help us, because we're getting a lot of numbers and operations in our equations now, we can just help us to read those a little bit better by putting each part of the representation into brackets. So if 1 6 is here, that's gone into a bracket. 3 6s are here, that's gone into some brackets. Altogether there are 4 6s, that's gone into some brackets. So add those onto your equation on your whiteboard. You can see some of you have already done that already. Okay, now, to help us to step further than just breaking down the multiplication, we're going to look at the answers of the bracketed section. So what is 1 6? Six. 6. What is 3 6s? How many dots are in my 3 6s section? 18. And then you've got 6 add 18. What is 6 add 18? 24. Which should be the total. We would write that as 6 is down here, and your 18 here equals your 24. So we've taken a large array, we've broken it down, and we've looked at each section. We've partitioned it. Okay. As well as this array on your worksheet, you have three other arrays that are different sizes and different colours. I would like you now to work on that, either by yourself or with a friend, or talking as you go along about what you're doing. Partition the arrays in any way you wish and see if you can write the equations to match. Okay, we've had a great discussion about the different ways that we've partitioned on our um, sheets. Hopefully you guys in your staff meetings some insert sessions have also had a good discussion about the different equations and partitioning methods on your sheets. Now, could you calculate, or how could you calculate, seven times five, seven fives, using this method? So we're not going to jump straight to seven fives, we're going to partition it. How might you do that? I might do um, five times five and two times five. Okay, so you'd do five fives and two fives. Mm. It's like you've read my mind, that's actually what I did as well. Okay, so we've got one five, two five, three fives, four fives, five fives, five fives and two fives. Okay, how we go at writing that equation on your board? And then I want you to, absolutely, Kelly is already adding the brackets in. And then can you talk to each other about the answers you would write underneath to help you to find the solution? Mm -hmm. So I write 25, 10, 10, 10, 10, Absolutely. So I can see you've partitioned it the way that I partitioned it. 7 fives is equal to 5 fives 
and two fives. Seven fives is 25 out of 10. Seven fives is 35. What do you notice that's different about how I've presented my equation this time? The equals on the other. Oh, see. The answer, the total, the full amount, the seven fives, that's the full, I've popped it on this side. As long as it goes on the other side of the equal symbol, we can also represent our calculations in that way. The answers don't always have to be at the end. The answer could be at the beginning, and your questions can be on this side. Oh, goodness. How could we calculate 15 sevens by using our really secure partitioning method? What could we do? Partition do 10 sevens and 5 sevens. 10 sevens and 5 sevens. That's what I thought I would do as well. Thank you. So 10 sevens and 5 sevens. So 15 sevens is equal to 10 sevens and 5 sevens. We've got 10 sevens is 70. And 5 sevens is 70 out of 35 is 105. So by breaking down what we know, a 15 sevens is made up of 10 sevens and 5 sevens. We know what 10 sevens are. We know what 5 sevens are. We can then add. to make them easier to solve. Which ones wouldn't you partition and why? Talk to your partner about each calculation. Would you partition them, would you not? You and your partner might have disagree, um, talk about it. Could you draw, draw a diagram to show how you would partition the ones that you would like to partition and why? about which ones we would partition and which ones we wouldn't. Now, I would like you to complete these equations. I'd like you to explore them by yourself. If you get stuck, you can talk to a friend about what you're doing and why. And then, if you manage to complete these, can you write some of your own? That's the end of our teacher training lesson, our school development session. Um, what I would like you to discuss now is what really struck you about the lesson, what stood out for you, um, and what elements of that session would you like to go away and have a go at with your class and why?